You're now tuned into Sykes' Weekly Nerf Dosage. You know, I'm just like a lot of other people out there. You're just wondering why the hell did YouTube decide to go ahead and integrate the whole Google Plus shit into the whole comment section below. Like, it just makes things just so difficult. I'm sorry guys, I know I haven't been responding to your comments as much as I would like to. It's because of this whole stupid Google Plus shit that, you know, they decided to update and integrate into YouTube and stuff. So I don't know man, just, just pisses me off. Like, stupid motherfucker. Hey, what's up good people? Welcome to episode 52 of Pwned. Uh, yeah, I just took a shower. My hair's wet and everything. But anyway, today's episode is gonna be a big bulk of like, like war videos that I actually, you know, filmed the last time I went to a war. And the second part will be of the zombie strike uh, rifle sling thingy. So you can click on this half of the video to go watch the war footage and you can click on this half of the video if you don't feel like watching the war footage and you just want to go and watch that part about the um, rifle sling zombie blaster thingy. Yeah, so anyway about the war, I had a lot of fun. That war was like crazy fun. Uh, I managed to get quite a lot of footage, especially the one at the start when you see the baby. Uh, yeah, so much respect. It's like, it's kind of cool, you know, parenting, doing stuff like that. I, I thought it was really good. Um, yeah, so during the war, uh, you know, some new, like, I guess not really new, some, some ideas were actually thrown out and they decided to try it out. So um, you will be seeing a typical one after another. I don't even know what that name, that style of the war is called. It's like... You know, you have eight people on each side, one person goes in, another person goes in, and then they fight whoever dies or whoever gets hit, the next person just comes in automatically. Yeah, so it's like a kind of a let's take turns and stuff. That was kind of fun. So I have a big chunk of that. And also, uh, based off the old days of the old Wild Wild West, when you actually face your backs against each other, take a few steps, turn around and have a quick draw kind of a challenge. Well, they decided to try that and then they started to improve from that and improvise and I thought it was mad fun. So yeah, I have all the footage and I hope that you guys enjoy it. I know it's going to be a long time, but here you go. This is Prance. <laughs> You're on TV Yo. again, bro. <laughs> you. <laughs> You're not dying, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Every time the camera points at him. Titan Maverick firing Titan rocket. Very nice. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Crazy range, my friend. Hey bro, are you happy? Yes, them happy just to make Nubi upset. <laughs> oh nice, what this one is for? Nice. You can talk about it if you want to. Oh wow, really? It actually comes with a spring, but the spring is unusable since it's too small. You'll be scratching your plunger. What's the red stuff? The red stuff is, actually I'm not sure, so sure. I think it's spacer for you attaching the skirt seal. Then for the black tape thing, right, it's actually to cover the holes for your stock bridge. Yeah. Cover the holes for the stock bridge? you know the stock bridge? Yeah, get the hole, yeah. Oh, oh that's quite cool. So for silicone part, it's... Yeah, Remove the space the blaster, Yeah, it's pretty good. Eight bucks. Yeah, for eight bucks. Nice. Cool, man. Thanks for sharing, bro. Yo, Hi, bro. Right. Good job with the video, man. Hey, thanks. You want to see now? Do it like that, do it like how it did, but now I do it like what? Got speed, I trap this racket, determination. 
Good job, man. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> well, at least I finally finished this and I can do my other stuff now. Yeah, it's always like that, right, when you edit yeah. videos. I mean, it took me nine hours. Yeah, nine hours. Total nine hours. Then I had to go out and uh, film as well. Go out and film, lock the heavy equipment around. Yeah, but it's all of it. Yep, it's, it's good fun. job. I like this side. Bring this house off. That's cool, man. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey Alex, you're one there. Eh? Why? 
Never mind, I also think pink is manly, bro. It's okay. Pink is a new black. That's right. Ready? Go! Talking to a, your own child, right? But holding a <laughs> long shot in your hand. I don't think so, man. I know next time how we should discipline our kids. <laughs> but do your homework, or not? But do your homework. <laughs> Never do your homework. <laughs>
Hi, Piggy. Okay, Hi. what you want to do? Range test for Mega Sentinel with Mega, Mega, Ma Mega, Ma Mega, Mega Magnus. Okay, Mega Magnus with the Nerf Elite Dart. And go short. Ready, go. That fish is still the floor there. The top and I can't even see from, from this camera though. Okay, that's with a pub deal for me, Dart. Whoa. I'm definitely buying this. <laughs> I, can, I, I, can, I can take a run away with this time now. <laughs> and did I ever mention to you that whenever Piggy has a shield, it's game over for you? Oh shit, Piggy's got the shield. <laughs> Whenever Piggy has a shield, it's game over. Look at him, he covers his whole entire body. Yeah. He even did it with the with the stonewall shield. No, you guys are dead. Once Piggy has a shield, you guys are dead. Oh, that was a nice support. I bet it looks like a Goomba from the front. Oi! Hey! Hey! It dropped, Piggy. Piggy. Piggy, there. That's yours. Oh, you want to, oh, you want to reload? Yes, baby, he wants to reload. No, it's not. 83k left. No, no, no. Shit. Oh, shit. Dude, that's, that's pure skill right there. Single handed loading a hand cannon. There's a kind of fun that we actually have at the wards. It's really crazy, you know, seeing the way people play. Um, look, mind you, it's a, it's a rough, I don't even know what kind of a surface it is. It's a rough surface court, so, you know, kudos to Tim for actually just sliding and, and stuff. It's, you're mad. Yep, so, this is the next part of the video. This is the Nerf Zombie Strike Blaster Sleeve. Um, as you can see in the picture over here, it shows this dude actually... Uh, Looks okay. It looks like a strife. No, it's not. Sorry, it looks like a stockade stock. And over here, it looks like a retaliator muzzle. And at the same time, there's a clip sticking out. So I'm gonna address all these kind of issues. He actually stuffed darts inside here. So yeah, um, I have a pair of these. This one is still somewhat in its package. The other one has been taken out so that we can test it out. And uh, I'll show you guys the back so you have a rough illustration and a rough idea of what's going on. Uh, it's blaster sleeve. No one knows exactly what happened. Okay, I'm not gonna read this. It's all about zombies and stuff. So they actually show you that they kind of strap on a stockade over here with a retaliator stock in, in illustration. And there's a like a sling. Yeah, and then the sling has, has um, you know, slots for darts. And then in inside the, the thing itself is like a clip sticking out. You see the stockade stock and you see a retaliator for barrel. So what's that about? We don't know. So over here you have another um, retaliator stock. It says secure your blaster and this one has it folded up like that. So it says holes two blasters. Uh, da -da -da. So let's see how that goes later on. And it's made by the Perpetual Play group. So uh, the whole entire Zombie Strike line is actually made by this group. And actually, um, I think that their ideas are actually pretty good. Uh, I like it a lot. So yeah, um, this thing is supposed to come, you know, like kind of like clipped on. I don't even know what kind of clip that's called. But you can see it's clipped on here at least. Uh, the rest kind of burst, I don't know if, if it actually came out doing shipping, I have no idea. But I'll just grab my cutters that I put down. And I'll just get this right out for you guys to see. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so quick question. What are these things called? I, I have no idea. You know, the kind of stuff that they used to put onto your socks and some 
of your apparel. Yeah. So uh, apart from this, there's nothing much else inside this box. I actually kind of yeah. There's really nothing else on it. The only thing that you can just take cue from is the images on the back. And uh, we're gonna actually take a look at that right now. So this is the. Let me get the name right. Okay, I don't want to screw it up. It's called the Zombie Strike Blaster Sleeve. It looks like this. Okay, with the sling, and uh, it's not like the bandolier sling, but these um, this holder over here, this area, this is uh, kind of stretchable. Uh, let me see if I have some clips. Okay, give me a second. Let me go get some clips. All right, I'm back, and I have a pair of clips. I'll just put this on the table over here. Let's address the whole clip thing first. Okay, so in the picture. Uh, you see the guy actually having two darts in each slot. Get some darts. So I have a handful. I have about five darts here. Okay. Uh, let's see if they actually slot into these slots over here and how well they stay. So that's one dart. It's not so bad. So it's two darts like that. I don't know if the if the, if the darts will ever drop, but it seems to be staying on quite. I'm sorry, my fats are shaking. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. doesn't seem to want to come out. So I think this works out pretty well. Uh, I'm gonna put like a dart on the bandolier area or the or the sling area. Okay, this is kind of hard to load in. Let's try head first or tip first. It's still kind of hard. You can see that my dart's kind of like being squished through and through just to get this. Mm. Try it again with another dart. Yeah, I'm kind of struggling, but yeah, as you can see, it's not that easy to get the dart into this spandex area, stretchable area. But but it works anyway. And uh, yeah, we have one bigger one. I'm gonna try and put a clip here, like this. Okay, so this I guess this works out like that. So yeah. It's funny though, like, would you really want to be leaning against your darts like that? I have no idea. But anyway, there are slots over here. Um, yeah, this one right here is like Velcro, as you guys can see. And on top of it is like that whole loop thing that you can actually put your darts through. Yeah, so uh, pretty nifty. Another Velcro thing over here like that. And the top one is unfortunately not. So I'm going to take this out because it's going to be difficult for me to demonstrate to you guys. First of all, let's try out this thing and see how well it holds in a Spectre, aka a pistol sized blaster. It can hold in a Spectre, it should be able to hold a strong arm and or a, um, what do you call it? Fire Strike, yeah, that's what I want to say. Fire Strike, with no problem, so there we go. It, will it drop? does seem to be coming loose a little bit, so that's not too good. Uh, let's see if I can find a better way to kind of secure this thing. Hmm. I don't know. What if I loop it? Okay, I'm going to loop it through the trigger area, like that. So let's see if this works. Still drooping. You guys can see. I can actually. Whoa! It's it's definitely gonna drop. Look, it went all the way. It's definitely gonna drop. So, uh, I don't know if this will actually hold up well enough for practical purpose. You know, maybe for packing and just light traveling around, it's not gonna be an issue. But this definitely, no, no. Okay, so Spectre out. So here I have an Alpha Trooper, an Elite Alpha Trooper, and uh, yeah, just a. Uh, Check out this slot over here. There are some like uh, stretchable uh, elastic bands over here. So one on the side, one on the top, and you can just velcro it off. Um, which way should it be? Okay. When you see the word nerf, your handle's supposed to be like that, okay? I kid you not. So yeah, we put it in this way, like that. And then we kind of strap it down in place so we can do this around the hilt of your blaster to the back and this goes over the top like so and it holds your blaster in with no problems okay this is actually kind of sturdy because the buckle here there's no slot at the bottom for it to fall through so this is pretty good for an alpha trooper and you can just sling it sorry guys i'm slinging it this way because i'm left-handed 
Okay, so they sling it and it'll look something like this. Right? Um, there's a buckle over here for you to tighten it or loosen it up. I'm gonna tighten it just a bit. Yep, there we go. Okay, it looks like this on my back. Now for trooper. Uh, there are many ways for you to access it. For me, because I'm left-handed, I will access it this way. Sling it by the front. But for you guys, you can actually just sling it from the back. You know, like that. I don't know. Whatever you like. It's just practicing with this thing. Okay? Um, let's see if I can actually just reach over. And undo this thing. I guess with some practice I can, but I'm struggling. Found it. Got it out. Okay, well, that's that's one way to go about it. Look, I'm not an expert, okay, guys? I'm sorry if I look like a, an idiot on camera. But this is, you know, this is the first reaction. Yeah, so, um, we can also holster it this way in. Um, you know, around the front, like that. Just have to make sure that you get the whole Alpha Trooper in uh, nicely and correctly. Like so. Make it snug. There we go. So now it's snug in place. Right. Now here's a problem that I know, okay? If you leave this open, there's no way for you to close up the slot at the bottom over here. This slot, there's no way. There's no Velcro over here. So the Alpha Trooper would very highly likely just fall all the way through and go, whoa, go too far in like that, okay? Of course, the way this holster is made, this sleeve, you see this part over here, that's where the Alpha Trooper kind of stops. So. Yeah, you can still sling an Alpha Trooper this way, but it's just difficult for you to reach in and get it. And then it's difficult for you to yank it out because you need the other hand to hold the bottom to put it out because this is like a flimsy piece of cloth. Okay? So yeah, uh, enough of the Alpha Trooper. Next up is the Rapid Strike. The Rapid Strike is the choice blaster for many a nerfer nowadays because of its full auto you know, uh, mechanism and firing method. So that's pretty good. But this only works if you have it fully extended. And you want to kind of slip it in and make sure that it goes in all the way nicely. As you can see, I'm kind of struggling with this whole uh, sleeve in front of me. But yeah, that's what it's supposed to look like. More or less, take out this part. There we go. Wham bam shazam. That is what a rapid strike looks like inside the holster. I'm gonna take it off because it's kind of silly for me to keep having it on and trying to demonstrate it to you guys. So yeah, uh, as you can see, it's kind of tight. Um, really, honestly, um, you know, I can barely fit my hand inside. But here's one cool thing that uh, we kind of noticed when we were at the wall. If you were to attach a four barrel at the front, so that you know to prevent this lid from closing, attach a four barrel that sticks out. And if this slot over here was a little bit bigger. Uh, you know, you could just reload on the go uh, without even taking a rapid strike out of this holster. Now let's address the whole slot issue, okay? There is a slot on this side of the holster that in the illustration, this dude over here, you can see that there's a clip sticking out right there. Now, that's absolutely ridiculous. Look, I'm going to try and line up the rapid strike. And now you can... oh. There, you see the dust just dropped out. So, anyway, you can see the clip, uh, the magwell inside. Now, we're gonna try and put this clip into the magwell, alright? So, look at how much work and effort you have to go through just to make sure that happens. Number one, you gotta make sure that <laughs> the mag fits perfectly around this thing. And number two, you gotta make sure that the lip, this lip of the mag gets past this opening and it's it's kind of tough. Look, I'm gonna have to struggle with it now. Let me see. There. And that's that. <laughs> so, after all that trouble, okay, it's gonna be easy for you to take it out. Now, let me just show you. It's gonna be easy to pull it out, but it's not gonna be easy for you to put another clip inside. Just, this is easy, right? And, see? The lip gets in the way, look. Right? There's no way you can fit that. Ah! So this thing... Man, I wish that it was just wider, you know? 
I thought it would be an easy fix, but the way they engineer this thing, they kind of have like stitches across this side and here, so it's gonna be a bit difficult, so yeah. Well, that's it for the Rapid Strike over here. Alright, so I have my modified Mega Centurion over here. <laughs> you can see this thing is huge and it uh, doesn't look like it would fit. I don't even know how I'm gonna hold it. Doesn't look like it would fit. Alright, let's just try, okay? So, barrel in first. Okay. And that is all. <laughs> And that's the furthest it would go. Yeah. Maybe it's got something to do with the handle over here, but yeah, that's the furthest it would go. Still feels a bit a bit weird though. It's still kind of like top heavy. It's, it's leaning towards the back. So that's a bit strange. Um I don't know. Mega Centurion. Okay, let's. Just for you guys, I'm going to take this out and we'll see how that goes, okay? So my handle has been taken off. And let's put the whole century on in. Now, that looks like a much better fit, doesn't it? Like, you can see part of the front barrel sticking out. So the downside is that you have to take note that in stock Centurions, the entire full barrel has to be attached. Now, the thing is, this lip is not even wide enough to expose the lower part of the Centurion. Uh, here, so this is not gonna work out, okay? Uh, yeah Right, but if you have a modified Centurion or you kind of and you know you kind of Got rid of that lock over there. It's gonna fit like this and uh, it's a pretty good fit. Let me just try and Strap this across the handle area and we'll see how that looks right so um, Definitely holsterable now, uh, I mean slingable now Makes more sense, and uh, yeah, it's actually pretty comfortable. You guys can see, I'm gonna try and do a semi squat for you guys. There we go. So, this Centurion on my back, like so. It is uh, pretty comfortable, but it's gonna be quite difficult for you to take out. So, <laughs> let's see. Yeah, it is. Sorry, guys, I know this is not uh, the greatest review for you because. I'm lefty, but yeah. Okay, and the last blaster that I'm gonna demonstrate for you guys is the new Zombie Strike Sledge Fire. Yes, you can see it's modified. I won't be going through the modifications this video, it'll be for the next video. Stay tuned for that. But let's just see how this thing fits because, since you know it's in the Zombie Strike series, and so is this, so it's uh, undone at the bottom. I'm gonna get this in. See if it slips. No, is it gonna slip? Okay, no. So this looks like it's gonna be sticking out at the bottom like that, and you can't even see the stock on the top. Okay, uh, if you were to close up the bottom like so, then it'll fit this way, just like that, which is not too shabby, and you get the stock kind of sticking out at the top. Now if you guys are wondering whether this thing can fit a long strike or long shot in stock form, no. Because there's no give for the priming handle for the long strike and the long shot. However, for those of you guys who actually have long shots uh, with the shotgun grip mod, it's going to work. Uh, one thing I've tried, I'm kind of lazy to go get my long shots right now, but one thing I've tried is that the bipods of the long shot is, is too wide to fit inside this holster comfortably. But if you have it removed and it's a it's a shotgun grip, it's gonna fit perfect. Just wanted you guys to know. So I noticed that I made a blunder at the start, and there's another velcro strap over here. This might help in securing a secondary blaster or a second blaster onto the sleeve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this rapid strike, sleeve it all the way in, secure it in place, and then. I'm gonna take this specter and I'm gonna strap it down. Looks like it's kind of possible. I'm kind of pushing it a little bit, a little bit too much though. But uh, you guys get the idea. So seems a lot more sturdy right now. But uh, I'm pretty sure that it's actually not meant for the specter just by looking at it this way. All right. So you guys can actually go ahead and consider. Now it's time for my verdict on this product. 
I think that Perpetual Play is pushing the limits of accessories for Nerf and I think it's a really good idea. The sad part about it is that we don't get it in Singapore. Oh, by the way, the Magnus is released in Singapore. I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys already know. Um, I wish that we would be able to see more Perpetual Play stuff in Singapore. You know, especially the zombie strike line. I mean, that's the only thing they're actually really kind of doing right now. I can understand the delay because, you know, in Singapore, there's not much hype about the whole HVZ thing. And clearly, the zombie strike line is geared towards the HVZ side. Uh, but this thing, in my opinion, if you are a nerf collector, this thing is, uh, you know, pretty good for any nerf fan. It is a little bit on the pricey side. I got it for about, I think, 36 should be about 30, 30 odd USD. I had to ship it in, so I got a pair and I bought it off Amazon. Uh, in case you guys are wondering. You can get it off eBay, but I'm pretty sure that the sellers on eBay kind of jacked the price up. Uh, all in all, I think it's a pretty nice um, rifle sleeve. In the past, I had to rely on, you know, getting military grade or like, I guess, fake military kind of rifle holsters to try and put my blasters in but I was never able to find one that would hold my shotgun grip long shot comfortably. The downside is that of course it being a holster or it being a sleeve there's no way for you to actually sleeve it with a clip inside unless you know you were to go and alter this thing and where's, where's that slot? Unless you were to go and alter that slot and you know just make sure that this yeah I have my rapid strike on the wrong way I'm sorry but make sure that this uh, slot is wider but it's entirely up to you, you know. Uh, for me, if I had a choice, I would just leave this alone, you know. And I would just sling, it'd be my secondary blaster if I actually take this to a war. Alright. Um, it's pretty nice because it's in a blue digital camo. Of course, it just resembles uh, the whole zombie strike, all the, uh, all the um, pouches and all the other accessories made by Perpetual Play. But, yeah, um, if you guys already have a means of, you know, carrying your blasters, this is something that you might just want to skip on uh, if not and if you guys are you know looking for more ways to hold your com your blasters comfortably go ahead and do this get this one instead um, for me I'm kind of happy that I have two I mean for me it's like I could always make use of it one way or another you know what I mean going to a wall with a blaster with the primary and slinging my secondary like this yeah I think that's pretty cool um, yeah so the most I guess the most important thing for me is that it can actually hold a rapid strike and of course it can hold a long shot. That's the most, uh, I guess, the, the, the biggest plus of this product for me. That I, it can hold a shotgun grip long shot. Yeah. And we have come to the end of this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. It's time for us to say goodnight and goodbye. Um, I hope that you guys liked the war footage that I actually shared with you guys. I had a lot of fun. I had a blast being there at the war and filming it. I mean, you guys could tell I was laughing all the time. Um, stay tuned for the upcoming war. Remember, uh, 25th of November at Kampong Ubi Comedy Center. So check out Nerf War SG's um, Facebook page or check out nerffiesta.com for more details and I hope to see you guys there. Um, I hope that today's review was okay for you guys. I know it was like everywhere. There wasn't really a structure because I wanted to just share with you guys whatever whatever I had in my head that hit me at that point of time. You know what I mean? Like just being an honest review off the top of my dome. You know what I'm saying, yo? <laughs> so um, yeah, if you guys like this video, I hope you guys give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're not subscribed already. I'm really sorry if I'm taking such a long time, you know, responding to all your your comments and your messages because Google Plus is like, I don't know why I can't hit the reply button. Like, sometimes I can, sometimes I can't, so I don't really understand it. It kind of sucks, but yeah. You know, uh, I do feel bad. I really want to respond to you guys, especially uh, for I think episode 49. A lot of you wrote some really good comments about parenting and about, you know, the way Nerf is going. I really like that. Thank you so much uh, for the continued support. Take care, everybody. Have a great week ahead. And I'll see you in the next episode where I'll be showing you guys my modified zombie strike. Uh, sledge hammer. Sledge, no, sorry. Sledge fire. Yeah, <laughs> see? Like, uh, this is what happens when I'm sleepy. Good night, guys. Peace.